Hey teachers, this smart board game pack is for math, third grade, it's CCSS aligned. There are 16 in total. I'm going to try to go as fast as I can to share with you how each one works. In the add and subtract bakery game, students click start, click on an object that will land them to a page with a problem on it. They solve the problem, then from there they'll click on the cupcake to check their answer. Then they can click on the points page to add points. Students can play in groups of four or individually. Then they go back to the starting page, they pick a different object, they solve that problem, so on and so forth. Area Flower Garden Game has a lot of problems for them to develop their skills in area. Here they count centimeter squares, they choose the right answer, and then a flower will pop up. Here they need to draw lines to create centimeter squares so that they will count in order to calculate the area. And excuse my writing in this video, it was very hard for me to do on the computer. Once they've counted all the squares, they write the answer. They touch the flower to check their answer. Here they just calculate the area using the formula and they write out the number sentence to solve and then they write the answer at the bottom and on the little leaf down there you see they actually have the formula to remind them. Once they are finished they will also click on the flower to check their answer. Here they just count the centimeter squares to check their answer. Um, there's also word problems for them to solve using area and it just goes on. There are 20 examples. Oh, here is where they need to segment a shape into two different area problems and add them together and this to me is a particularly difficult skill but this page really helps break it down for them to see what they actually need to do to calculate the area of two rectangular objects that are put together. In Big Top Circus, students will solve problems of extended multiplication by multiplying one digit times digits multiples of 10. They have a cute scoreboard to add their points. There are 20 problems in all, including word problems for students to practice extended multiplication. In Buggy Graphs, students practice picture graphs and bar graphs, and so they'll get chances to practice uh, analyzing bar graphs and also creating bar graphs and they also will do the same with pictographs. And there's a self-checking feature for students to check their bar graphs once they're finished. In Candy Ray's multiplication there's two different types of games within it. First they can count arrays and they will write the multiplication sentence that goes with the array and they check by touching the piece of candy at the top and there's a cute scoreboard. There's also a word problems game where students read problems, also write the multiplication sentence and solve. And they also have these little candy manipulatives that they can drag into the page in order to help them solve the problem. And one version also allows them to drag in gumdrops in order to create the arrays that they need to solve a multiplication problem. In Factor Friends, students will click on a heart and they'll be led to a problem with these cute pairs of animals and they have to choose which one has the right factor pair to make the problem correct. If for some reason they choose the wrong pair, which may happen, it just has a uh-oh, try again screen. So there's just lots of different multiplication problems for them in this game. Fractions on the farm. Students choose an object and there's three different types of problems and this one they have fraction strips that they can use to illustrate each fraction in order to compare them and choose the right symbol. And when they pick the right pig it will make a sound. Here's the scoreboard. Here they just read the fraction strips and compare whether or not it, they are equivalent and when they touch the right cow it will move. And in the third type of problem they will create equivalent fractions by using the fraction strip below and then they write the correct fraction that exemplifies that fraction strip and they click on the tractor to check their answer. There are 20 prompts in all to cover these skills. Fraction Fiesta covers some other common core standards. Here they have to write the fraction for the shaded area. They toca la guitarra to check their answer. Here's the scoreboard. Here they have to shade the object to match the fraction. And toca el taco. 
Here they work on the number line by counting the spaces for the denominator and seeing how the increments increase for the numerator. And they took a las maracas to check their answer on this one. Here they write all of the fractions that correspond to how the number line here is divided. And they took a la bandera to check their answer. There are 20 fun fraction problems in all. In geometry, barbecue students have lots of fun practicing facts about quadrilaterals and so forth. And so they answer these questions. If they're correct, it says, congrats, you're a grill master. There's a scoreboard. And then if they touch something and they're incorrect, it's going to say, uh-oh, you burned the meat. There are some fun drawing opportunities to practice geometry. And throughout, there are 20 self-checking problems to practice geometry. Input, output, addition, and subtraction tables. I use this horse theme for a very sweet girl, Caroline. And when students check their answers, they touch the right horse and it will neigh. If it's wrong, it will not make any sound. Here's the horsey scoreboard. And there are problems where the out box is missing, where the bottom out box is missing, where the rule is missing, where the end part is missing. Just lots of examples for them to practice. Missing number monster. Students will have to decide which number is missing in a multiplication or division problem and they touch the little splat thing to check their answer. There are word problems included. There's lots of variety to keep your students entertained and learning. Multiplication Facts has four different games to help students work on that fact fluency. Beat the clock, they just use the timer and they answer and then touch each circle and see how fast they can answer all of those problems. In Candy Bump, you may be familiar with this, students will touch the two random generators at the bottom, multiply, and then place their color candy on that space. If someone else gets that same space, they will then put their candy on it. That space is blocked. Nobody else can land on it. They continue playing to see who can have as many spaces locked as possible. In Hungry Monsters, it's kind of like checkers, but it's the fox and hound version. I don't know if you know, but one team is the two monsters. One team is the candy. The two monsters want to go diagonally and try to trap the candy while answering the multiplication problems. The candy can move left and right. The monsters can only go right. If the monsters trap the candy where it can no longer move, the monsters win. If the candy makes it all the way to the other end, the candy wins. If you're confused, all the instructions are down at the bottom, and believe me, the students love this game. In Candyland, students pick a piece of candy for their piece. They touch the random generator, randomized generator at the bottom to see how many times they can go. When they land on a problem, they either answer it or some they actually click to be led to a different problem where they must read it and solve the problem to advance. Perimeter picnic. Students choose an object and then in this case they would count up all the sides of the centimeter squares. They touch the basket to check their answer. In this example, they have to calculate the perimeter of this shape, they write the number sentence, the answer, and then they have to find the picnic object that has that right answer. There are 20 different problems of perimeter picnic fun. Rounding robots. We are almost done. Okay, here they are going to read where it tells them to round to in the number on the robot. They write it in the circle. They touch Actually, they don't touch. They get their racer feature and their race in the middle of the object down below, and it will reveal the answer. And there are lots of examples for them to practice with. Tool time. This is all about elapsed time. And here it shows a method that students can do using a number line that I find very helpful. They choose an object, and then in this example, they would just read and write the time, and then they use the racer feature to shine that toolbox and check their answer. Here they will try out the number line strategy. They write the beginning time in the left small box. They write the ending time in the right box. And then they will just make a series of jumps. And it can, doesn't have to be the same way every time. But they will try to think of a way that will get them to that ending time. And above each jump, they will write how much time passed in that jump add those together, put that on the answer line, and then they click on the screwdriver to check their answer. 
There are lots of other examples and word problems are also included to help them with this difficult concept. Last but not least, transportation estimation. Students will have fun with all different types of vehicles practicing estimation. They will read the problem, estimate, use rounding mentally, touch the right object and it will fly or drive whatever. If they choose the wrong one, it won't go anywhere. Here they have to round mentally each of the problems and see which one is near 400. If they touch the right answer, it will drive away. Here's a simpler version where they round to the tens like it says. They add it mentally and choose the correct answer. Lots of problems and lots of fun in this transportation estimation game. If you made it to this part of the video, you deserve an award. But I don't have anything except just to say thanks for watching and if you'd like to purchase this product, it's in my TBT store. You can just look down in the description box below this video, click on the link to be directed to the site where you can purchase it. And there are also other videos that I have just for teaching tips that I think you'd really like. So subscribe while you're here so you won't miss out on any of that fun learning that we have going on here at Flapjack. Thanks for watching. Happy teaching. Hope you're having an awesome week. Bye-bye.